Hey, welcome back. Today, we are going to add a product to WooCommerce. Now, before we add products into WooCommerce, we have to consider what categories we're gonna put these products in. You have to think about your products pretty carefully because you don't wanna have a big mess down the line, just random products and random categories all over your website. It's just gonna be a big mess. Do you take a little bit of time just to figure out what the categories are for your website? and then stick to those categories as best as you can with all the products that you put into your website. As an example, this MacBook can either be under laptops as a category or under Apple products. Then a subcategory for Apple could be all their laptops. So consider your categories before adding any products. So let's take a look at product categories right now and then just see how to add them onto your website. So here in the back end of your website, we're gonna go into products and we're gonna go into categories. Now here in my example website, there is a whole bunch of categories already. But let's say for that MacBook example that we're going to start a whole new product line inside our website. So let's add two categories. One is going to be called tech and we're just going to say add category. Now you can add a thumbnail and description for your category. It is quite handy if you're actually displaying categories inside your website with their pictures being displayed. Then obviously this is where you're going to put in the pictures for your categories. But I'm not going to do that now in this example. So the second category I'm going to be using is laptops. But before I add this category, I'm going to look for the parent category of tech. So now we're going to keep all our products nicely aligned within our tech range that have to do with the laptops in this example. So I click on parent category and I scroll down to tech and then I say add new category. So now if you go to look on the right hand side, you can see that under tech is a subcategory of laptops. So now that we have our category, let's go add the product. So here in the dashboard, if I wanted to add a new product, I'd go into products and say add new. Now here is the add new product page. The first thing you're going to see is going to be the product name. Then we're going to have the product description. We're going to say what type of product it is. Here's a product short description. Now on the right hand side, if we start from the top, you can see that this block is where we can publish the product once we have everything we need for the product. Then we can select what the product categories are. Are there any product tags that we'd like to add? Then at the bottom, we can see the product image and the product gallery. The product image is going to be the featured image of the product, the main image. And then the product gallery is all the extra pictures that the people can see of the product from different angles. Now the first type of product that we're going to add is the simple product. So a simple product is, let's say that in your store, you only have one type of MacBook available. You don't have all the options that Apple actually has to offer. You're only selling one specific type. So a simple product would be perfect for that because you don't have all those other options to choose from within your own store. So if your product doesn't have any options that the client can choose, then a simple product is perfect for that. So let's add a title to our product here in add new product. So the title for my product is the MacBook Air M1. So underneath the title, we have the product description. Here's where you go into detail to describe exactly what your product is about. Here I've put in all the details of the MacBook that I'm personally selling in this example. Once we're happy with the description of the product, then we scroll down to the next block. Here you can see that under general, there's going to be a regular price and a sales price. So here I'm just gonna put a normal regular price. So my normal regular price is $1,000. Now do put in a regular price, even if you're going to have a sales price, because the system needs the regular price. If you don't have a regular price, then nothing's going to be displayed in the front end. So do have a regular price, even if the product is on sale. For the sale price, if there was one, you just add one here as well. So you can just put say 999 as a sales price. You don't need to have a sales price. You can leave this one blank. And that's what I'm gonna do here. In inventory, you can say if it's in stock, out of stock, on back order. You can even limit how many you wanna sell. There's a whole bunch of different options that you can see. You can even say just one per client. Here you can also add the SKU. In this example, I'm not gonna actually add any other stuff. I don't need to make sure that it's in stock and available for my client in the front end. Under shipping, here you'd add all the shipping information. So this would be one and a half kilos as a product weight in my example for the MacBook. And then the dimensions of the actual box would be 45 centimeters, 33 and 10. So that's gonna be the whole box of my MacBook. It's not just the MacBook that's inside. It's actually the whole box that you're selling to the client. Some people actually get that confused sometimes. So I'm just saying that now, just in case that you might be wondering the same thing. Now you can add a shipping clause if you need it. Most of the delivery companies have plugins that can integrate into your website and do take care of all the shipping for your products automatically. So here in this example, I'm not going to add a shipping clause because I know that the courier company will take care of this for me. 
The next tab is linked products. Now you can do specific upsells and cross sells of any other products in your store while the client is actually on the product page. Here I'm going to leave this blank as well because I don't have any other tech and I don't want to cross reference some beauty products or pillows or anything else within the website. Now attributes say like the size or color or anything else like that that's where you could add it over here but because it's a simple product I'm not really worried about that because I actually have mentioned a lot of the attributes in the product description. And then under advanced you can actually add a purchase note just for reference for yourself and menu order. The menu order is pretty helpful because if you want to do a specific ordering on your store page you can actually add that here. So you can say that this product must always be product number one in your store page under whichever categories it aligns to. And the reverse is true as well. So like you can say that this product must be product 100. So then WooCommerce will always put this product at the 100th position or last because if you have say 95 and this is number 100, it'll just put it at the back end of all your products. In the short description, you can add this if you need it. Uh, some themes work with short descriptions very well, other themes don't use it at all. It's up to you and your website if you need to add this or not. Now I'm going to scroll up all the way to the top and now I'm going to concentrate on the right hand side of the screen. Now I'm not going to click publish just yet because I still have the categories and pictures that I want to add for this product. Now if I go down to the category section, now I can look till I find tech and laptops. I'm going to tick on both because this product is both. It's the main category and the subcategory. It's very useful for searching so that people can just click on tech and then the laptop will show up because it's under that category and as well as laptops. The product tags I'm going to leave. Then at the bottom here is going to be the product image and I'm going to add those now. Okay, so here's my picture. I'm going to upload it now. There's my main product picture. Now I'm going to add product gallery images. These are the images are all to do with this MacBook that I am doing here for this product. Now that I have all my gallery pictures loaded up, I have my main product image that everyone's going to see first. I can go all the way to the top and I can say publish because I have all the information I need for this product. So now that the product is published, let's have a preview in the front end. And there we go. Here's our product in the front end. And you can see here is the main image that we chose for this product and it was the first one to show. And here are the other ones that the people can see of our MacBook Air that we're selling. And you can see all the information plus the thousand dollars that I set as the price is here on the right hand side. It is the layout of my website. Obviously your website is going to look a bit different but you can see that all the information is being displayed. And that is a simple product. The next product we're going to do is a variable product. It's going to be the same MacBook Air. We are going to have color options, we're going to have RAM options, that sort of thing as well added to the product. And that is a variable product. Okay, so now that we've actually made the simple product, it's time for us to make a variable product. Now as you know that the MacBook Air doesn't come just with one option. The MacBook Air comes with different RAM configurations, it comes with different drive sizes, and it comes in different colors. And that is a variable product. So let's go and set up a variable product now. So here in the back end, we're going to products and we're going to go add new. Now we're going to go in the same motions as we did with the simple product, but with a slight variation. So let's start off with adding the product name. So now that I have the title to my product, it's time to put in a product description. So now that I've entered my product description, I'm happy with it. Let's go down into the next window. The next window over here, it says product data and it says simple product. Now we're going to change this into a variable product. So now let's go through the options of this variable product and fill in what we need to fill in. Now you can see in inventory we have the option to enter the SKU. Now you'd enter over here if the different variations don't have their own unique SKU number. Now I'm not going to fill in the SKU because I don't really need them. But if you do, just bear that in mind that you can actually add it per variation. So you don't have to worry about that if they're all unique and then you think you don't have a place to put them. You will have that place. Next we go into shipping. Here I'm going to enter the shipping details. I'm going to enter the weight. And then I'm going to enter the dimension. Now that I've entered all the shipping stuff that I need, I'm going to move on to attributes. I know that I'm not going to add linked products, so I'm skipping that and just heading over to attributes. Now the attributes is what we need to actually set up the variations. This tells WooCommerce what the variations are comprised of. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to add the color. The color options that we have for the MacBook in this example are gold. We're going to add our separator to tell WooCommerce that this is a different value to this attribute. Now you can see that I've added the three different values to this attribute and it's gold, silver and space gray. Now the separator in between silver and space gray, that straight line down, 
that's a unique symbol there on your keyboard do find that I, I can't remember the name of this particular one but when you find it on your keyboard you'll know exactly which one i'm talking about now that i'm happy with the attributes now i can come up and say add another and i can add as many as i want if you want you can save first and then add whichever way there's no wrong way of doing it now the next attribute i'm going to need for my example is ram here i'm going to enter the different options so different RAM options for my product is 8, 16, and 32, and you can see I've got the separator in between. The cool thing about using the separator is that if a value has a space in a description, say like in color, it was space gray, you can see there's a space and you can add the space, and WooCommerce will know that that is still one single value. So that's what's cool to use the separator line to show the different values, and you don't have to worry about spacing or putting underscores or anything like that. So now that I'm happy with the RAM attribute, now I'm going to add another one, which is the drive space. The attribute name is going to be drive size. I'm going to put in two different options here for the drive size. And the two options is 256 gigs and 512 gigs. Now that I'm happy with this, now I can just say save attributes, and it's going to save all these attributes that we can use for our variations. Now the next tab that you can see in this block are the variations. And when we click on it, there's nothing here. Now there's two ways to make variations. The first way doesn't drill down to absolutely every single variation that is possible from the different attributes and the second way it does. The first way is very useful and quick because sometimes variations don't change in price. It just gives the customer different options. So like if a product came in black, red and white but the price was always one dollar then you wouldn't have to worry about each price of each product because the price stays the same. But then sometimes you have two different attributes and only the second attribute would actually change the price and the first one wouldn't actually affect the price. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here we're going to say add a variation. Now let's say for argument's sake that the only thing that changed the price to this MacBook Air was the, the drive space alone. That it didn't matter what color or RAM configuration that the person chose, the price was always going to stay the same until they choose what type of drive space that they wanted. So let's use that as an example now for the quick way and then I'm going to show you the more drill down way. So here we're going to say the drive size, we're going to say 256. So no matter what color or RAM configuration that they choose, if it's a 256 gig hard drive space, then this is going to be the price. And we're going to say that is going to be $1,000 for this example. Now we're going to add another variation, and we're going to say the opposite of that. Now if it is 512, then it's going to be $1,500. Now we save changes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up to the top again and before we do publish we have to choose the product categories that this product belongs in and this is going to be tech and laptops and then we scroll down I'm not going to add tags I am going to add a product image I'm going to set my main product image and I'm going to add the rest to the gallery now that I have my images I go up to the top and now I can say publish so let's preview this variable product in the front end and see it in action so here's a variable MacBook product in the front end so now if we select a color we select the RAM size and we say the 256 gig, the system knows that it's a thousand dollars for this. So if I change the RAM and I change the color, it's still a thousand dollars. If I change it to 256, it goes to $1,500. It doesn't care what the color or the RAM configurations are. So when the customer buys this from us, then we know that it's going to be the, that they want the gold one with eight gigs of RAM and a 512 gig drive space. But you and I know that in the case of the MacBook Air, this isn't the case. If you choose different RAM, it comes at a different price as well as the drive space. So now let's go and set that up now with this variable product. So now back in this product page, if we go all the way down to the bottom and we click on variations, you'll see that here are the two variations that we have for this product that works for this last example. But now what we're going to do is we're going to remove them and we're going to put in every single variation that this product comes in. And there's a quick way to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is just remove now that this stuff is removed. Instead of just pressing go for add variation, we're going to say create variation from all attributes and then click go. It's going to confirm this and we say OK and we'll go and look at all the different attributes and add the variations from there. Now you can see that there was 18 variations from all the different attributes that we have when we say OK and it'll auto create the 18 variations for us. So now you can see with our color, with our RAM configuration and the hard drive space. It has made everything for us. So here's all the gold ones, here's all the silver, and then you can see that there's some space gray. Do be wary because the, the rest of them is on a second page. So you can see over here we can have a second page where the rest of the space gray will be. So just bear that in mind when you're setting up your product. If it has a lot of variations, it can go into pages. So let's quickly set these up. The 8K gram with a 256 drive space was a thousand. So we click one thousand. And then we know that the eight gigs of RAM 
with five, 12 gigs of hard drive space was one and a half thousand dollars. And now we can go so forth and so forth all the way down and add different prices for every single one. So we just click on the second one, which is gold 16256. And we can say that this is one, two, and the next one, which is the 512. And this is going to be the one seven. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this all. I'm not going to show this on video, but you can see what it is and you can see how we're going to go through every single one and then add the prices for each one of them. Okay. So now that I've filled out all the pricing, I'm going to start from the first product again, and I'm going to add all the pictures to these products. You can do this all in one go, like the pricing and pictures. But for me personally, I like to keep constant on pricing and then move on to the pictures of the product. So here we can see we've got the gold. So now that I've opened up the first one, I'm going to select this picture icon and I'm going to say upload an image and I'm going to select the image that's for the gold. I'm going to say set and then underneath it says add additional images and I'm going to add all the other gold images for this product. And I'm going to close that and I'm going to do that for all the gold products. Okay, so now that all the gold products have their pictures, now I'm going to add all the product pictures for the silver one. So now that all the silver products have pictures, now the last ones I'm going to do is the space gray. So now that I've finally done all these products with the pricing and the pictures, I'm going to say save changes. And then I'm going to come up to the top right and I'm going to say update. Okay, so now that the product's updated, let's preview it in the front end. Okay, so here's our product in the front end. And you can see the price range is quite different now. So if we scroll down to the options, here we start choosing options. And then you can see that this is the 1000 Rand one. If I change this to the 16 gig RAM, it went to 1200. If I go to the 32 gig, it went to 1.4. And if I change the hard drive space, it went to 1.9. Obviously, I can change these down. And you can see the price gets updated automatically. Now remember, I added all those extra product images for this. So as you can see, I chose the color gold. So now if I scroll up to the images, you can see that it loaded up all the gold product images and all the extras for this one. So the customer knows exactly what they're getting. So if you see I choose silver, then you can see all the silver ones get loaded up. And that is a variable product. Now that we have the simple product and the variable product, that's the main stuff that you're going to be using. On more rare occasions, you might need grouped products or external products like affiliate links. Okay, so here in the back end, we're going to go into products and we're going to say add new. Now here's the same add new product screen. And now what we're going to do is just quickly show you the grouped and external products. So for the product name, I'm just going to put example product. There we go. Now here we can just add the description. There's a quick description. Now product data. Let's add a group product. Now you can see the screen changes quite quickly. Now here we just clicked on linked products and we can search for all the products that we created. These are generally the simple products and variable products. Let's just choose both MacBooks that I've had. To this grouped product, we're gonna add a quick product image and we're gonna select its category here on the right. And then we click publish. Now you'll notice we didn't add a price or we didn't add anything like that because it takes all the prices and it'll add it together for this group product. So let's preview it in the front end. And here's that group product. Now you can see both MacBooks are here and you can select the options of the second one and then we can add it to the basket. I wouldn't suggest using a variable product for a group product, but it works for this example. I'd rather stick with simple products so that there doesn't come into any issues potentially with different themes. Because there are fringe cases where the theme can't handle group products properly because it's not something that's used that much. So that is a grouped product. Another last product we're going to show is the external product. So we go into products and we go add new. Here we're going to put another example product name. For my product name, I'm just saying example external product. This again isn't something that's used that often. I'm just quickly putting in the product description here for this. I'm going to select external affiliate product. So here for this external or affiliate product, you're going to see the product URL. So here I'm just going to put in a URL for a MacBook somewhere else. If it's an affiliate thing, make sure you have the correct one as you just don't get your commission. There, here you can change the button text. I'm going to say view now. I'm going to add the price of say a thousand dollars and that's that. I don't have to worry about inventory or anything else like that because it's not my product. It's an external product. Remember, then I'm going to add my product image. I'm going to say it's this gold one. I'm going to add more product gallery just to add more images to it. I'm going to scroll up to the product categories. I'm going to say it's under tech and laptops and I can publish this product. So now the product is published. I'm going to say preview and let's see this product in the front end. See, here's the MacBook on my website. That's an external link. 
Now, if I click on view now, it's gonna take us to the URL where this product is being sold. Here for this example, I just used this website for the affiliate link. It's not actually a real affiliate. It's just one that I found that had the exact same MacBook that I was using for my example of a product. Now, obviously on their side, they'd register the affiliate link and then give you the commission because you linked your customer to their product and your customer bought it from them. And that is products on WooCommerce. It wasn't so bad, was it? If you are struggling and not coming right, let me know in the comments and let me see if I can help you out. We covered everything you really need to know about adding products to WooCommerce. For more advanced products, you'd obviously have to have plugins to enhance the product feature set. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see anything in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe to my channel. It really does help the channel growth. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.